Hey guys, exams are, for most of you, done. I know a few exams are still going on, um, but for most of you are done, you've got the long summer ahead of you, and I know you're not even thinking about them yet, but after the summer comes A-levels. Um, A-levels are fantastic, I love A-levels. Um, A-level chemistry, A-level physics is so, so interesting. I know GCSE physics might have been a bit dry. A-level physics is awesome, okay? Um, but there is a big, big jump from GCSE to A-level, like a big jump. So if you are ambitious, if you want to be getting those good grades, maybe, just maybe, we need to do a teeny tiny little bit over the summer. Now I know loads of you are just going to turn the video off at that point. What? She wants me to work over the summer? I'm just saying, if you don't have anything else planned, and I know some of you are going to have amazing trips to countries, um, amazing projects, amazing work experiences, loads and loads of things planned. But if in the next two and a half months you occasionally find yourself just a tiny, tiny little bit bored, here are a few things you can do to help prepare for your A-levels, to make your life a little bit easier. Um, so for A-level chemistry, I have made you a load of videos and a load of playlists. Um, there's another video, I'll explain that. I'll explain everything, so I'm not going to talk about that more here. But for like A-level English, maybe, or even politics or history or what, I don't know, long other subjects, maybe you just start reading some of the books now. Because you're going to have to read them eventually. And if the choice is between reading it while lying on the beach because you finish reading your other magazines or your other books or you finish that game and then you want to just wait to come. Um, maybe you just pick up that book and have a little, little read of it because you're going to have to read it eventually. And your choice is between doing it now during the summer while you're relaxed or doing it in January, December when you've got exams, when you've got loads and loads of other things going on where the full force of A-level has properly smacked you in the face. Maybe we just get a tiny little bit of a head start. Um, if you're doing a subject that maybe you didn't do at GCSE, so whether it's like um, A of Sciences and you only double or not triple sciences, or whether you're doing politics or law or anything like that, try and find um, the exam papers for the GCSE because they are out there somewhere, you have to go and find them and just see what other people in your class maybe already know because some people in the class will have done GCSEs in this subject and they might be ahead of you and it's the worst feeling in the world turning up to your A-level class teacher blah 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 and everyone else sitting there nodding and you not knowing what's going on that's what we want to avoid so um yeah I'm not saying you have to do loads and loads of work, I'm not saying you have to study the entire course by yourself over the summer, I'm just saying there's a big jump, you might find yourself in for a massive shock when we get to A-level, so if anything you can do to prepare yourself will be good, but obviously you deserve a break, like a massive break, I would love to have two and a half months off, but I'm having a baby, so I'm having like the Complete opposite of two and a half months off. I'll be on like no sleep for two and a half months. Yeah, occasionally just think of me and pity me. Um, only occasionally because you have lives. So, yes, please relax. But if you do get a little bit bored, just consider maybe doing a little preparation for A-level. And if you're not sure what preparation is, go and ask your teachers, because they will know, okay? So, yay, well done for finishing exams. Yay, well done for having loads and loads of time off. Just 